Ladies and gentlemen, Harold Friedman. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Harold Freeman. Uh, the question that I'm going to um, address is, what about people who don't have resources and knowledge? How do we engage them? Uh, and uh, I've worked about 40 years in the community of Harlem, and I'm going to talk about how I've approached this. Um, I came to Harlem as a well-trained cancer surgeon, faced women who were coming in, particularly with late breast cancer, some of them had ulcerated bleeding masses and wondered what to do. The first thing that I did was to set up a way for these women to get the test they needed to be screened, the mammogram. By 1979, I had done that. But that uncovered another set of problems. Now I'm screening women and findings come about and I haven't found a way to get them from point of finding to resolution. I got promoted, I became the national president of the American Cancer Society in 1989 and held national hearings on cancer in the poor. The findings were similar to the findings in Harlem. Poor people meet barriers when they attempt to get into and through this very complicated healthcare system. Poor people become fatalistic and give up hope. Poor people don't trust the educational system that we have. Those were the findings. So in 1990, um, with the local experience and the more universal experience, I set up something called patient navigation. I'm going to tell you about it. But first, let me tell you that the principal problem that I see is the disconnect between what we know and what we do. The disconnect between our wonderful discovery system and our broken delivery system. If you look at it a different way, the things that drive disparities, in, in my mind, are three major things. The top circle, whether or not people have resources, the poor and uninsured in that group. Circle on, the, on your right, culture, how people behave, has a bearing. And surely, whether people have been treated fairly has a bearing. Those three things overlap and drive disparities from prevention, detection, diagnosis, treatment, to the end of life. Poverty and culture are interrelated. The fourth box on your right shows diminished access to health care, which poverty drives. But we can't settle the problems of the poor only within the medical system. The same people who have diminished access to health care also have poor housing and less social support, less knowledge, and mispromoting lifestyle. So we come to a model that I created beginning in 1990 in Harlem. I had already found ways to screen women with cancer, uh, potential cancer. I created a model to pick up at the point of finding and assure that the people were rapidly resolved. Timeliness was the measure of success. And with this model, we had certain results in Harlem studying breast cancer. And I'll show you what they were. Before intervention, we saw 606 women with breast cancer in Harlem, and the five-year results, 39%, when it should have been 85%. Before intervention. After intervention, two things, screening and navigation in the same setting with the same demographics, we changed the five-year results from 39% to 70% five-year survival, in Harlem published both studies. What had accomplished this, uh, in my view, was two things. Be sure that people can get the test that they need uh, to be diagnosed, the mammogram in this case, and be sure when they have a finding that they're rapidly resolved through diagnosis and through treatment. That is what achieved these results. After this, we considered a broader navigation model. First, we concentrated between finding and resolution. Later, we extended the model across the entire healthcare continuum from prevention to detection, treatment, and survivorship. 
dividing it into three parts. There's an outreach component, so you can navigate people from where they live into a healthcare facility. But the navigation that's called outreach navigation is not over until the test is done. When there's a finding, you can navigate people from finding to diagnosis. Most people who have findings do not have a diagnosis. When there's a diagnosis such as cancer, you can, you can navigate them through treatment and then on and on to the end of life. The findings in Harlem from the study indicated that the principal barriers are financial barriers. For example, 50 million American people have no health insurance at this point. Hopefully the health care law changes will change that. I think it will. Another 25 million people are underinsured, meaning that they tend to become bankrupted when they have a serious challenge of disease. So approximately a third of American people meet barriers in attempting to get health care. There are also communication barriers. People do not understand the language uh, of doctors and nurses, and there's a need to, do, to fix that. Navigation can help. There's a barrier related to fear and distrust, particularly in poor communities, a lot of distrust. Patient navigators can help in that as well. And the sheer complexity of the healthcare system can be assisted by navigation. So we're suggesting certain things. Let me tell you about the politics a little bit first. From the program in Harlem, the findings, there was a lot of advocacy that occurred. And finally, the President of the United States signed what is called the Patient Navigation Act in 2005, George Bush. That put this thing on a high political plane and got a lot of buy-in from the country. Today, now, the American College of Surgeons last year determined that in order for a cancer center to meet approval, it must have a patient navigation process. The Affordable Care Act includes patient navigation as one of the things that it advocates, and the CMS just issued about $50 million to, to be applied to assist uninsured people to get into insurances through the exchanges. What you see here is the President of the United States signing the, the National Cancer Act in 1971. This is President Richard Nixon, and declaring a war on cancer. But I think that this was a wonderful thing to do, but what it did was to put money into research, which was really an important thing to do. But this president made no connection between discovery and delivery. He stated that this war against cancer will be over in approximately eight years. Uh, that was not correct. And so, in the few minutes I have, let me say this. Poor and uninsured people have a 10 to 15 percent lower five-year survival with respect to cancer. Um, can we engage them? I think that we can. There's a lot of power in the communities of America that can be harnessed. What we have done is to bring people who are called navigators into the healthcare system. How do we select them? At Harlem Hospital in the beginning and still today. We selected people from the community and brought them into the healthcare system, called them navigators, put them in the room with doctors who were doing the initial examination in the breast clinic. When the doctor made a recommendation, which he always did, the navigator would take the patient aside to a different room and ask certain key questions. For example, did you understand what the doctor said? Often the patient did not. Is there any barrier to your getting the biopsy the doctors recommended? I have no health insurance. Then we need to fix that through navigation. I'm afraid. I don't trust the doctors. We can alleviate that. I don't have transportation. Baby's at home alone. Whatever the barrier is, the navigators have to solve it. And let me make a distinction between patient navigators and patient navigation. I liken it to a mile relay. Four runners um, trying to 
rapidly go to finish a, a race. The first runner runs as fast as he or she can and passes the baton. In this case, the baton is the patient, the next runner and the next runner and the final runner. The race is not over until the last runner crosses the finish line. And so that's navigation. We need to take a, a look at paces not in some episodic way, a phase way, for the patient with the disease is not over until it's over as well. And so we suggest that we have patient navigators who are running in different phases of the race, passing a baton. If you drop the baton, you will likely lose the race. And so that's the very big picture. Uh, to this day, we see that a process that started in a poor black community um, led us to set up two things, assure that the patient could have the test that the patient needs to have a diagnosis free of charge if they could not afford it, and assure that when an abnormal finding was, was found, there was rapid resolution to diagnosis and through treatment. So that is the big picture of patient navigation. I think that this is something that the country needs to think about. There is an explosion of navigation programs throughout America. Thousands of hospitals have adopted it. It's an attempt to look at medicine in a different way, um, medical care. We organize our medical care in systems of care, which is a wonderful thing to do. We tend to become specialized, and the specialties are somewhat siloed for the patient. I became a surgeon. I had to step back from being a cancer surgeon to ask these questions. And so I believe the answer is two things. Continue to specialize as we do. Uh, to, we want the best surgery department, the best medical department, and so forth. That's fine. But find ways to allow the patient on the ground floor to move across specialties, which challenges our way of thinking. Uh, create systems of patient navigation that balance uh, especially care. Thank you very much.